venture investment community has driven much of the evolution and the proliferation of companies in the digital media, technology, and a lot of us think about commerce space. So question one, have we reached saturation? We see hundreds and thousands of startups. I mean, it's very prolific. The second part of the question <coughs> is, where do you see the next breakthrough advancements or innovation that will shape consumer behavior? Because it's already changed rapidly. So that's the two-part question. So to the, to the first part of the question, we, we certainly don't, do not see any let up <coughs> in, <coughs> in the, the growth of number of startups. Um, last year, we looked at, in New York, uh, in New York we looked at 2,400 companies. The year before, we had looked at 1,900 companies. So it kind of like every year, it goes up. And, um, and, and the reason is, is very simple. Um, as Mark Andreessen, uh, a very famous VC said, um, software is eating the world, and we are certainly not at the middle of this. We're not at the end. We're at the very beginning. And so every sector is being devoured uh, by software and by technology, um, and which opens for us, the kind of work that we do, uh, opens up a myriad of opportunities because we are funding the disruptors and, and very early on. Nobody really knows what's going to be next, but there are some, <laughs> there are some telltales. Um, I mean, just to be kind of generalist, I think that uh, voice computing is the, definitely the next big platform. Uh, you are already talking to a number of devices, kind of somewhat despite your best instincts as, you know, who wants to speak to their refrigerator? Um, but, um, but we speak to our cars and we speak to uh, Alexa, we speak to, so increasingly, and the, the, but it's not so much the speaking part, is that the capabilities behind or that which are very much uh, uh, predicated on machine learning, artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, these capabilities are coming to scale at the moment. So what's happening behind uh, is, the, the, is, is moving at tremendous pace. So voice computing, uh, uh, obviously robotics, but robotics in, a, in my mind a way more dramatic fashion than what is being imagined. The, 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 the robotic community is now um, able to access a supply chain uh, that uh, mostly makes uh, 3D printers yeah. or machines of that nature. So I, I, for instance, have a couple of companies that sell incredibly advanced robots for $5,000 a piece. One automates labs, the other one automates uh, compound pharmacies. Um, and it's only made possible because the components are basically commodities today. Uh, so you're going rapidly from a world where uh, a robotic arm in the auto industry would cost you $150,000 to very capable machines that are very flexible. You can change the applications uh, in a lab environment that costs $5,000. And they, this has happened in almost no time whatsoever. Everybody in this room has consumers. And everybody's focused on the millennial consumer. What should they be thinking out about? How has the millennial consumer changed so much in the last decade? Or is this technology first consumer? Can you talk about that to this group? Because I mean, I assume many of, many of us here are thinking about that. How, how would you, I, I would how assume, do you look at that from an investment perspective? I, I well, first of all, I, I, I learned a long time ago not to be the person who filters the investment in my firm. I, 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 I allow my 25-year-old associates to do that. Um, and for, I mean, anybody who has children who are, you know, from certainly preteen, but certainly people in their 20s and 30s, know that, um, that we are, uh, you know, really two different generations. Uh, and the generation that was um, not only digital native, but that was brought up uh, on, on the smartphone, which is you know, the up and coming, the people going to uh, high school and not going to college, the, the, the Gen Z generation uh, is even far different than the millennial generation um, and, and far less tolerant of anything that we care about. Uh, so uh, the brands that we cared about, uh, the ways of buying that we cared about, uh, automobiles, well, I, I used to love automobiles. I can't find any young person who loves automobiles. Uh, so everything that we care about, they really don't care about. So they have their own culture, uh, they have their own way of doing things, 
uh, certainly they don't like the brands that we buy. You know, we think about as we advise clients, right, on acquisitions and, you know, let's, let's step into the boardroom. Based on your exp ex experience as a director, you're looking at a disruptive acquisition in your sector. It's digital. It's disruptive. But it can come with two things. Dilution. Maybe it's just near-term dilution. Or a cultural disruption. How do you deal with that as a board member or as a CEO when you know you need to bring change to your company? How do you think about that? Well, um, dilution, I mean, there's dilution and there's death. Um, so I, <laughs> I, I'll choose dilution <laughs> any moment, right? Um, but you, but the, the reason why you, people are scared of dilution is because they, there's no story behind it. I mean, I, Jeff, Bezos is really not typical of anybody, but he, he for years said, I'm not going to care about quarterly earnings, and I don't really care if you like my company or not. I, I'm building this company because there's a huge opportunity, and I'm building it for the future, and we're not going to have much profits uh, for years to come. Um, and and, and the, the shareholders bought that story. So it could be sold, um, but um, uh, the the... the the, 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 the real issue is there's a huge amount of money that's being spent in technology in every company. Every company. Hundreds of millions, if you take any large company, any large company is spending hundreds of millions of dollars on IT. Um, but it's all backward looking IT. It's all maintaining these systems that people have, had, have inherited. And if you've ever merged with a company, uh, you. Your, your existing company has two systems, uh, now suddenly you have four. Um, and how do, you, how do you reconcile that? And, and, and so the IT departments, what they do is that they, they, they put their fingers in the dike and everything is held up by chewing gum, literally. And, and it's like a treadmill that never ends when, the, in fact, the solution is really, really clear. You set everything up to the cloud. You do like Bezos does. And in fact, he's built a big business doing that. Mm -hmm. But you send everything to the cloud. And, you, and, and, if, and if, if you sit, as I have, on the audit committees and finance committees, and, and you have to once again approve an upgrade of hardware in your company, you're, you're, you're not doing your job. It might be that this cycle you have no choice because then you know, uh, all vital systems will fall. But you should not accept that your company is, is, is not taking steps immediately to send, certainly at first, all new applications have to be sent to the cloud. There should be no development of applications in-house. Secondly, there should be a plan where you go from the least critical to the most critical, and it might take you 10 years, I don't, you know, it might take you a long time, but there's got to be a plan to send it to the cloud. If you don't do that, for sure, uh, you, will die, you will die, because that, that will, those hundreds of millions of dollars that your company spends will be like a stone around your neck and it'll suffocate you.